Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. It's Ellen back here and I am making my triple butter bars today, a remake. Uh, I've got all of my, add not all of my additives, but most of my additives in the oil bucket. And here goes my lye solution, which has titanium dioxide in it because that wonderful warm vanilla sugar scent that I'm using has vanillin in it. So uh, that's the titanium dioxide in the lye. Here goes my buttermilk powder and my heavy cream powder to just amp up the creaminess of these triple butter bars. Uh, they're triple butter because they have mango, shea, and cocoa butter, as well as other wonderful luxury oils in there. I probably should have added these dry powders before I added the lye. That was a, a mistake on my part, but it's okay. The fragrance does not accelerate, so I had plenty of time to blend them in. So to represent the triple, I already have my matte yellow oxide in all of the oils here and what I'm going to do is I will pour three layers and add a little titanium dioxide to each layer as I pour it to lighten it up and hopefully it will make three different buttery colors and that will represent the triple butter I'm trying to stay with that theme here so here goes the first layer in and uh, it's really smooth you can see this fragrance is behaving beautifully here goes my titanium dioxide to lighten up the next layer Anyway, I've got plenty of time, even with the TD, to do all this blending and mixing. Um, so, And the fragrance smells wonderful. Nature's Garden warm vanilla sugar is wonderful. So I'm just kind of going back and forth. This layer is very similar in color to the first, but you will be able to pick up just a little bit of color differential in there. So one of the things that I love about remaking my triple butter bars is that I will choose different fragrances each time I remake. So it, it you know, switches it up a little bit. I always try to stay in the warm luxury line of scents. So here's my last layer with the TD. But anyway, it keeps it fresh. And even if I duplicate the swirl patterns, they come out different every time. And I love that about soaping. It's never the same. So my recipe is the same, but the colors are the you know the swirls and the fragrance are different each time I remake this and it's just fun to do it's uh, one of my most popular bars I think the goat milk oats and honey is my all-time bestseller but this one comes in a very tight second and uh, it's for a good reason it's just wonderful it's one of my favorite bars personally also so you can see the last layer there is definitely a different color um, and you'll see when we cut the uh, first and second layers were very similar, but you can, you can pick it up. You can see it's in there. So just getting the last little bit of soap. And here I'm going to texture the top with my stainless steel baby spoon. I don't even know where I got this spoon. I've had it forever, and I just put it down in my soap room, and it's been so handy. <laughs> I just There's something beautiful about a simple scoopy top. It looks pretty. It's satisfying to do, and uh, I love it. So I will put the wood lid on this mold and put a blanket over the top and let this go through gel phase tonight. And 24 hours later, we will come back and unmold and cut. Ta-da, here we are. There's the top. I did steam the top to get it glossed up a little bit. My, I am working with a tall, triple skinny workshop heritage mold and the log splitter there off to the side. Uh, is from them also and I've really enjoyed working with these molds and liners I've been very happy with them easy to easy to unmold look at that there's something really cool about a big old slab of soap isn't there so here's my log splitter and I can get three loaves out of that one um, mold that I pour there you can barely see that color the third color but uh, it's in there you can see it they're so pretty and these smelled great the next day and after the cure they smell wonderful also that's a big one with fragrances if they stick around after the cure that's that is a big deal so there's the loaves and now we will get to the cutting and to cut these awesome bars of soap i have my wonderful olga from good speed soap cutters uh, alexander did a beautiful job Look at those swirls. I'm very happy with how these came out inside. It's kind of a drop swirl, pretty. And you can, you can see three colors in there if you look close. Anyway, I'm loving my multi-bar cutter. I have to be sure to 
tighten the wires before I cut and loosen them when I'm done cutting to help make the wires last longer. I've been told that's a good way to extend the life of your wires. So I'm trying to remember to do that, but it is a breeze to use, very sturdy. So if you're looking for a multi-bar, I recommend Good Speed. They're on Instagram and he's got an Etsy shop if you're looking for them. So here is my KitchenAid vegetable peeler that I use to bevel the corners of all of my soap bars. I feel like it makes the bar really comfortable to hold, to not have sharp edges. And then I have my stamp here from Digital to Create. And he, it's specifically made for soap. They do a great job. It makes a nice crisp impression. You just send them a file with your logo and they will make you a wonderful soap stamp. So here's how I do, I line them all up. I spritz with isopropyl alcohol uh, to help the stamp release from the soap. And um, it just, that's what works for me. And the alcohol just evaporates off really quickly and dries, so it's not a big deal. But that's how I get a nice crisp impression on my soap bars. And this is the day after I poured. This is about you know 24 hours after I made this soap. I do stamp and bevel the next day on most of my bars. And that's just what works for me and my recipe. So here is Triple Butter Bar. I hope you've enjoyed this and have an awesome day.